Hey everyone, it's me, Brian with Destructive Media, back with another Lyric React video. Today I've decided to do Tool Sober, the live concert version. It's one of my favorite live concerts on YouTube. Manu's performance in this is breathtaking. That being said, the audio is a little bit rough, so you'll have to kind of deal with that. But I did add lyrics onto the video, so you should be able to read it. So you might not be able to hear it that well, but you'd be able to understand the lyrics. And of course, as always, I'll come back after the video and we will break down the lyrics paragraph by paragraph or line by line and see what I think they mean. All right, with that, let's jam out to some tool.
Holy man. That was amazing. I I cannot believe uh, Maynard's performance in that. I mean, the whole band, really. But his performance is just, it locks you in. And uh, it's amazing. So, all right. Enough of my fanboy gushing. Let's get on with the lyric breakdown. So the first verse or first paragraph we have here is, There's a shadow just behind me, shrouding every step I take. Making every promise empty, pointing every finger at me. Waiting like a stocking butler who upon the finger rests. Murder now the past of must we, just because the sun has come. So off the bat, this song is written about a friend of the band. Uh, he believed that he always had to be high to be creative and to get inspiration. And they kind of not really made fun of him, but they were kind of pointing out to that. Like, if you always got to get high, eventually you're going to turn into a junkie and your creativity is going to go away. So the whole song is kind of a play on that. There's a lot of different meanings in this song, um, but that's like the the main easy one to say that it is about somebody uh, that they knew that thought that they had to be high all the time to be creative. But to go a little bit deeper into that, he is kind of singing about his friend and how addiction stalks him like a shadow. Uh, it's always behind him, ever present, and it's gives you the promise of creativity and how it's going to let you free and see all these different worlds and it it may do that but eventually that promise will be empty and then addiction or drugs can be like a stocking butler it's always there waiting for you to serve you to help you to get you through your pain or to get you through the emotion that you need to get through the part murder now a path of must we just because the sun has come i'm not too sure on that part yet i know some people say there is a religious meaning here uh because there is the mother mary uh won't you whisper which he says in this live version uh and some of the censored versions of the radio song uh but on the cd version or the album version is jesus won't you fucking whistle something but the past is done so some people say that does allude to religion um so yeah i'm not really sure on that second part um to me with the drugs because i think the song is about drugs and addiction of murder now the path of must we a lot of people when they do it like well i mean must we take drugs you know do we have to do it and it's kind of like well it's it's already there it's my addiction i'm just going to murder that path of must we and then also there is a third layer or meaning or fourth layer at this point i don't even know because there is another song on this album called 46 and 2 that also alludes to jung's psychological theory of the shadow that talks about how the shadow being your consciousness or your subconsciousness and how some people are a victim of it and it being your consciousness the subconsciousness it is always stalking with you um so that th the song might be a be about that um i will link a lot of that down because that's a lot of heavy reading to go into psychological theory of the consciousness and unconscious mind uh tools very into that a lot of their artwork shows that um so uh, like I said, I will link that down below if you want to read more into that. Uh, I got really into reading it when I was doing this lyric breakdown, uh, but I didn't want to babble on about it and lose a lot of people in the theory of psychology. So, uh, yeah, just find that link below here if you want to read more about that. Uh, so we're just going to move on to the next part here, and because there's so much we can break down in just that first verse. So let's go. So going on to the second verse of Jesus, won't you fucking whistle or Mother Mary, won't you whistle something but the past is done. Mother Mary, Jesus, won't you fucking whistle something but the past is done. Um, once again, that's going to the, the friend of the band that thought he had to get high to do great things. Um, it's actually referring to him saying like, Christ, can't we just talk about something new? You know, like or think about something new. Can I just think of a new inspiration? So he's looking for um, Mother Mary, God, Jesus, to whisper inspiration into his ear um, about something that he hasn't done in the past. Uh, that's wh where I got from it. That's kind of a lot of the stuff I was looking up. Because, um, you know, I try to be accurate for you guys. Um, I try to be uh, transparent and say, I do look some of this stuff up. I do have my own interpretation of it, like everybody else, especially Tool. A lot of their songs are kind of opaque in their meaning. Uh, they can mean many things and they do mean many things. And songs will always mean something else to the person listening to it. Moving on to the next part here is, why can't we not be sober? The good old double negative there. I just want to start this over. Why can't we drink forever? I just want to start this over. So everybody likes this double negative part. Um, there's a lot of different theories about what it means. Um, what I think it means is why can't 
we not be sober? So if you break that down with even just a comma there is why can't comma we not be sober? Why can we not not be sober? So it's like the addict saying like, why can't we not be sober? I just want to start this addiction over or my life over. It can also go to the person taking drugs that I just want to start this over. I want to get high again. Um, can we just not be sober? I don't want to be sober. Let's start over this high. So it can also go that way. Because once again, this song is about a friend of theirs that did drugs that like to be high. Uh, they say it's a friend of theirs. But I wonder uh, how much of it is one of the friends that are in the band. Um, I will link an interview that Adam Jones did uh, down below too. So you can kind of read the whole interview he did. It's a big, big, long interview. Uh, it's really cool. He did it back in 1994, I believe. So I will also link that below. And then we'll move on to the next part here that I think is really interesting. I am just a worthless liar. I am just an imbecile. I will only complicate you, trust in me, and fall as well. I will find a center in you. I will chew it up and leave. I will work to elevate you just enough to bring you down. So for myself personally, uh, growing up, I thought a lot of that was through the eyes of the addict or the person that was like drinking or doing drugs or whatever they were doing is they were thinking themselves of that. Like they, I am a worthless liar. I am an imbecile. I'll complicate you. I'll rise you up and then I'll let you down. Uh, which, you know, it can very well be about that. But growing up, I've kind of learned to realize it's probably through the view of the drug itself um, whatever drug that may be, drinking or heroin or pills or, you know, whatever the person needs, um, you know, that can also be the drug itself talking. Like, I am a worthless liar. I'm an imbecile. I will find a center in you. I'll chew it up and leave. I'll work to elevate you at the high and then I'll bring you down and destroy you, uh, which I, I think is a lot more artistic and sounds a lot better. Uh, it's, it's probably where Maynard was coming from. It's, it's, I think it can go both ways, but I think that's more of what it is. And then going back into the Jesus, won't you fucking whistle or Mother Mary, won't you whisper? Um, a lot of people think that that is like somebody looking for divine intervention um, or inspiration, looking for things that you've never done. Uh, but it can also be through an addict's eyes of looking to religion or AA to help them get through things, which a lot of people do. And it does help a lot of people, but a lot of people will turn to that or, you know, towards what they view as their religion to help them get through something or forgive a sin of their past that's been haunting them, which is probably why they're still doing the drugs. And I think that's kind of where the mother Mary thing is coming from, or Jesus won't you fucking whistle. Uh, cause whistle is a pretty old saying, like, um, it whistles into your brain. It talks into your ear type deal. And I think that's kind of where Maynard's coming from. Um, but, you know, I'm not quite sure at that part. So if you want to let me know down below what you think it means in the comments, um, I would really love to hear what the community thinks about this part right here because um, I went back and forth so many times of what I thought it was. So since the song repeats itself and I don't want to repeat myself too much, I've kind of gotten across a lot of info here. Uh, we're going to skip right to the end here and go to some different parts here. Uh, towards the end, he says, why can't we not be sober? Why can't we sleep forever? I just want to start this over. Um, sleeping can be viewed as like, you know, dying or sleeping forever, uh, overdosing. But it can also just be, you know, being high, sleeping forever, um, living in your dream world and just sleeping forever against the world and insulating yourself. And just that's that's where I think it more is. I don't think it's really talking about death or anything like that. So I just wanted to highlight that little part at the end of the song that it kind of changes up there. So at the end, when Maynard's doing the I want what I want live, uh, it is so powerful. You, you can almost see him coming through the screen at you. Um, and that's why I think it's more about drugs from that performance that we've seen. Uh, there's a lot of performances where he does kind of the same thing. Because when you watch it, his whole posture is that of somebody that's like hurting or like addicted and kind of messed up. Um, and it just it doesn't look to me like it's somebody that's looking for faith or religion. It just seems like it's somebody that's either addicted or high, or he's channeling the drug itself right on stage and showing like the ugliness that it does. And that's another reason why I wanted to show this live version is to kind of hammer home the point that I think that this is about drugs. Uh, it's kind of hard to get a feel for a song when it's just audio. When you watch the artist perform it live, uh, you can kind of 
see from their body language or stuff more maybe what the song is about all right and that is my breakdown of sober by tool the live version if you want me to do any other tool songs or perfect circle songs or any other band let me know down in the comments below and of course i got to do the usual youtube please like subscribe share do all that fun stuff it does help me out and until next time take it easy